Shin splints are terribly painful. They can stop you from walking normally. They can stop you from doing your favorite exercise like running, which is why in this week's video, I'm going to teach you how to treat a shin splint and also most importantly, how to prevent getting one. But make sure to watch the full video because I'm gonna teach you my favorite shin splint stretch, which works amazing for myself and all my friends that I know. Now let's begin. Now before we get stuck into how to treat shin splints, it's really important that we first understand what shin splints are and why we get them. Because understanding all of this is going to be really helpful when we come to how to treat it. So shin splints are a painful, tender feeling that you get on the front of your lower leg where you have a bone which is really long and big called the tibia. Your bones, muscles, joints and tendons are normally really good shock absorbers. But when you do high impact activities like jumping, running or dancing, they need more time to recover. So when your body is struggling to recover from all that high impact activity that you've done, it's going to send those signals, those pain signals from the area that wait a minute, I need some time to recover. That's basically what your body's trying to do. It's trying to recover and those pain signals are sent as a result. Also, you may have not been active for a while and you suddenly get back into your old routine. I don't know, you might be a runner. You've suddenly got back into that routine. And again, it's too much, too quick and those pain signals are coming back. And more often than not, this is an all too common cause of shin splints, which is very preventable by taking things slowly and slowly building up to your old level. So not jumping straight into the deep end. Now let's look at how we can treat those shin splints, which you've already got. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do, which is probably the most obvious thing, but a lot of people don't do it, including all the runners out there, you know who you are, and I'm a runner as well, I know it's really difficult to do this, but you need to stop, you need to stop doing any form of exercise when you have shin splints, you need to rest. It's time to give your body some time to rest. Now hear me out, because if you take time to listen to your body and rest now, you will stop your shin splints from getting worse and prevent any possible permanent damage, which you definitely don't want. Make it a habit to rest between activities to allow for recovery time in the future too. And don't suddenly ramp up your exercise routine. Always ease yourself into more challenging exercises slowly. So whilst you're resting, there are a few things that you can do to help speed up that recovery time. So first of all, increase the blood flow in the area. You can easily do this by propping your legs up on some stools or using some pillows to lift it up. This is gonna increase the blood flow and help with recovery. Another thing that you can do to help reduce the inflammation in the area, and again, speed up that recovery process, is getting an ice pack or some frozen vegetables, whatever you have at hand, wrap it in a tea towel, place it on the area for about 10 to 15 minutes, usually about two to three times a day. Make sure you wrap it in that tea towel because, because kind of speak, because you can actually damage the area of the skin if it's not covered. If you're putting direct ice on the area, it's not actually too good. It can cause skin burns and nobody wants that. So now that you're recovering and resting, which is great, you might still be in pain. You might be thinking to yourself, but Abraham, what about this pain that I've got? What about these shin splints? I know how painful they are. I've had them as well. I know exactly how painful they are. Well, you've got two options really. Option one is medication. So you can take paracetamol and or ibuprofen, but it's super important before you take any medication that you speak to your healthcare professional first to make sure that you're safe and suitable to take it. And also read that information leaflet that comes with it again, again, just to make sure that you're safe and suitable to take it. That is the most important thing because your health is the most important thing. Now moving on to option two, if the medication route isn't for you, that's completely fine. Another option is that you can massage the area. Massage the area gently, either use some moisturizing cream for it, or if you want to be really fancy, use some essential oils. It's just gonna give that relaxing experience. There's no evidence that using essential oils or anything like that is gonna help increase the recovery time, but massaging the area will help Okay, so no matter what you do, massage the area, it's gonna help increase the blood flow to the area and help with recovery time. If you wanna be really fancy, if you wanna spend some money, you can get a sports therapist or a professional to do the massage properly for you, which is again, even better. Um, but if you just want to be normal like myself, just give it a massage. Now, apart from making you feel great, all that massaging is gonna help lengthen your muscles. So let me explain to you why this is relevant. So when we do exercise, when we do any form of activity, our muscles contract and get shorter. The more intense that activity is, the more they contract and the shorter they get. So imagine your muscles kind of bundling up and becoming less elastic. If you think about it, what tends to happen is you don't warm up before an activity or you don't stretch after you're done. So make sure that you do the warm up 
and stretch afterwards. Otherwise, everything tightens up and you'll eventually get shin splints as a result. So it's super important to get into the good habit of doing stretches before exercise and cooling down afterwards. Also, whilst you're resting right now, if you do have a shin splint, you can do some gentle stretches around the area, especially around the calves, the feet, and the Achilles tendons. This is gonna allow more space between the muscles for capillaries to grow. This is then gonna allow more blood, more oxygen, more nutrients, all of the good stuff that we require to help with recovery of the shin splint. Also, I am going to leave more information in the description below on all of these stretches and everything that we talk about in this video. So if you ever want more information, just click on that description below. Although rest and stretching will help your shin splints, sometimes your shoes might be causing the shin splints in the first place. Make sure to replace your shoes if they are worn out as your shoes will lose their ability to cushion your feet over time. You could also think about visiting a podiatrist and getting some insoles if needed. But it's also important to remember, there's only so much protection that your shoes can give you. You need to try and avoid doing exercise on hard surfaces all the time. So instead of running on tarmac or on concrete or whatever, try and switch it up a little. Try and do it on grass, on sand. This kind of surface is more forgiving. Also, you need to do some strengthening exercises. Look, if you want to prevent shin splints from coming back and becoming this repetitive injury, you need to start doing some strengthening exercises. So you're probably now thinking, well, what are these exercises? Well, not to worry, because I'm gonna tell you. So a few good exercises that you can do, which are both gentle and they will help build up the strength, include swimming or yoga. Very good exercises. Another good idea is to speak to your personal trainer or a sports therapist to help build up a plan which is gonna help prevent you from getting shin splints. So they're gonna build you a plan to help strengthen those muscles. This is really important. Another good idea is they might even be able to check your foot for you or to speak to your healthcare professional about it because you might be flat-footed. And being flat-footed, that can also increase your chances of getting shin splints. They may also be able to watch you run. This is a really good idea because they're gonna see what you might be doing wrong. You might be landing incorrectly, which is causing the shin splints. By the way, if you do have flat feet, there are in soles available that can help for this, but it's always best to speak to your healthcare professional about it so they can recommend the right one for you. And before we move on to my shin splint stretches, which I mentioned at the start of the video, I just want to say one last thing. Please make sure you wear the right footwear. Don't wear your Converse's that you wear when you're going out to a restaurant or for some food or for a coffee. These sort of trainers are not the right trainers that are gonna support you when you're running or doing high impact exercises. You need to buy the right footwear to prevent you from getting shin splints and protecting your feet and legs and all your muscles. It's really important. Right guys, so, oh, can you see me there? I'm just on the run right now, taking a quick break. I'm going to show you this stretch. It's epic. Once you do it, you're going to love it. Everyone I've shown so far absolutely loves it. So, once you finish your run, when you're doing your cool down, you need to do this stretch if you get shin splints. If you're prone to them, this is really going to help. So, it's like a dorsal section. So, when you pull this up, and all the muscles around the shin, around the tibia, are going to get stretched. So, it's like this. So, you're walking on the heel of your foot. It looks very funny. I'm sure people are seeing this think it's funny. So, but when you do it, do it for a couple of minutes as you're cooling down, walk around your garden, walk around your house, wherever it is, make sure you do it. And I promise you, you will see the benefits. I usually do it before I run and then after I run, that's my cool down. Um, and once you start doing it, the effects are gonna be really good. I'm a bit out of breath, but I'm gonna go back to my run now, sending awesome vibes, let's carry on now. Okay, so I hope you're finding this information useful so far. The next thing that I want to talk about is when to seek medical advice. Please remember that with shin splints, patience is a key, okay? So you should start to see an improvement with your symptoms within the first two weeks, and then you can sort of gradually return to normal activities. But please do remember that shin splints can take up to six months to recover for some individuals. So once, I, once again, I'm gonna say it again, Patience is the key to shin splints. But remember, if you feel like your shin splints are not getting any better after one or two weeks, then you might need to see a healthcare professional. Don't leave it too long, as you could be setting yourself up for some permanent damage to your shins. Also, please remember, if you have any bruising or swelling in the leg area, you need to speak to your healthcare professional. And as well as that, if you get any shooting pain down the leg, or if you get a sudden onset of pain, then again, please speak to your healthcare professional. And lastly, please remember that if you're taking painkillers and the pain is not going away, it's not touching it, or the area is red and inflamed and swollen at all, it could be something else. So again, 
you need to speak to your healthcare professional about it. Please remember, it's never too late to speak to your healthcare professional. So if you've left it one or two weeks, or you've been having it for two to three months, don't keep thinking to yourself, oh, it's gonna go away, oh, it's gonna go away. Speak to your healthcare professional. They're always there to help you, and it could be something more serious which needs investigating. This is really important because as always, your health comes first, and that's the most important thing. Okay, so it looks like we've come to the end of this week's video. You should now be a shin splint pro, so you now know all about shin splints, you know all about how they come, where they come, you know all about its treatments, you know all about the stretches, you know all about prevention. You're a shin splint pro, so tell your friends, tell your family, tell your loved ones. And also, if you have any of your own tips, please leave a comment below because I'd love to read it and I'm sure everyone else watching this video would love to read it too. That's it for this week's video. Always remember that you're awesome and I will see you next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure to click that like, follow or subscribe button now to stay up to date with new weekly videos.